mouse x. The system variable mouse x always contains the current horizontal position of the mouse. Okay, so p5 injects global variables. Okay, let's. Yep. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> not not digress on that one. I'm gonna put that in the same <laughs> place in my brain where the coronavirus is. Uh, <laughs> so let's just get jump right into it. Uh, good okay. Monday morning, everyone. Uh, <laughs> this I am uh, your normal host MPJ, and this is our fantastic guest uh, Dan Schiffman. From, uh, from the coding... oh, internet weirdo with a train whistle. Exactly, uh, which is a gimmick because you run another programming show called The Coding Train, hence the, hence the whistle that you can find on YouTube on, under, under Coding Train. We also did it, like we've done collabs before on the, on, I've been on Coding Train and uh, you've also been on the show discussing the uh, visualization, uh, data visualization and uh, all kinds of stuff, and it's one of one of my more popular episodes. It's turned out really, really. Oh, well. interesting! Cool. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, we got, you just do a very quick introduction of what it is yeah. that we're going to do. So, Dan, you mean not yeah. my whole full life story again? <laughs> no, for it, like no, no. Now we were just going to walk right into uh, it. Yeah. So, uh, one of the projects I work on is an open source. Uh, set of software tools uh, from the Processing Foundation, one of which is called P5.js, which is a JavaScript library for creative coding and beginners and drawing and animation. And so I have a book project I'm working on about doing uh, simulation within P5.js. And one of the examples is simulating gravi the gravitational attraction. And so uh, the book's called Nature of Code. It involves using vectors and forces. And so we were going to, I was going to attempt to uh, sort of push MPJ in the direction of making one of those examples from the book um, today. Awesome. Um, let's just jump into it, really. OK. Um, have, some code, like, have some code that we wrote uh, during the break and when we were having some, some tech issues. Uh, so uh, processing is really, really, really uh, straightforward to work with. Uh, so we just pull in P5 here. Via, uh, via CDN. Uh, and then the way you explain it to me is that there is one setup function that is uh, run on, on start, basically. And then there is a draw function that is, I assume that that is just run as, as often as possible. Yes. I think it's capped at 60 frames per second, and you could adjust that, but yes, as mm. fast as possible. Yeah, uh, and here we have uh, a uh, the, the the two simple functions where we just create a canvas uh, and then we create a just draw a, like draw a background. Uh, yeah, and uh, we see the results here on on the right side. Uh, and before we get into should we look at do you th like what's your style? Do you, do you think that we should look at uh, the end result of what we're going to do, or or do oh. we want to be, or do we more more want to be, uh, like hinting at, at what it is that we're we're going to do and let it? Well, let it I go. think we could. I think we could look at it. I mean, I I expect that we won't get all the way there to the full all the different features of the, this particular example, and I have in my mind a slightly simplified. But I I there's. There's nothing so, um, you know, shocking and surprising that like it needs to be like you know saved, and maybe that's good for people to get a little context. Okay, so nature of code, um, uh, and a attraction. Does, will that give us? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> this oh, look at that video. Of so go to yeah, go. Those are the old videos that I'm now remaking. That's those were made in like I think 2012. Oh. Uh, yeah, so and oh, but coding challenge number fifty-six, the one on the right, is actually um, is a good reference point for anyone who wanted to look at this example more. That's probably like a you know half an hour, forty-five minute. I don't remember how long it is. Um, video um, with um, 
uh, where I build a, a, a sort of full version of this example with attraction and repulsion. All yeah. Right. So this actually is a good, you know, this in a way is like we're uh, going to build the, the pieces of this. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Like this shows really yeah. like shows a little bit of what it is that we're uh, we're going to be building like a little particle system with. Uh, yeah. Hell on Earth is uh, as is that like flocking? Um, so it looks like flocking because the flocking example also has a lot of dots moving around the screen. And in a way, you're, what you're seeing here is a particle system where all the different um, particles are behaving in some way. But the, the big difference is the flocking system operates on some very specific rules, um, separation, cohesion, and alignment. And here what we're looking to do is just look at gravitational attraction, which is... Um, I guess most similar to the probably the like cohesion rule and repulsion is like the separation rule. So yes, but you know, these are what we're looking at here are the building blocks to building this flocking simulation for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's jump into the code. But yeah. first, I want to draw attention to our lobby sponsor. Uh, and I, I talked about, uh, about them before the break, but now we're using YouTube Edit, which doesn't have uh, the, the prior version. So, uh, I'm just gonna blow off so that we get the Brilliant down here. Uh, Brilliant is a long time sponsor of the show, uh, also a sponsor of Dan's channel, uh, The Coding Chain. Uh, so, and they, they, they support a lot of YouTube channels. Like, I think like, they are a little bit like the education infrastructure of the internet right now. <laughs> uh, but they um, they do these really nice interactive uh, coding tutorials with, they're not videos, they're not text, they are like inline editors with gradually increasing challenges. And they're really nice if you want to learn more complicated math, uh, compu like computer science fundamentals, how to do, how to do sorting and stuff like that. Uh, and also the kind of math that you need if you're getting into neural networks and stuff like that. And they are uh, like a very reasonable yearly subscription that you get a lot of, like a big rebate on if you use the um, use our URLs. And you can find it in the episode description if you're looking at the um, YouTube edit. But brilliant.org slash FFF. Also want to make a little bit of a shout out to uh, to our other other gold sponsor that is also like a long time sponsor of the show, Circle CI. Uh, they uh, they are really really nice and also like brilliant. Just like big supporters and fans of the show. I've been to their offices and they're just like so so nice to deal with. Uh, so I guess I have a question for you. There's a few different approaches we could take. I mean, but I probably in terms of making this example, it would be worth kind of like jumping in to like the building blocks for this example rather than stepping through a lot of like basic p5 stuff mm. and in that sense um you know m all my examples are uh, are done with a you know a heavy object oriented programming approach and so i think what could work well would be to create um like a class um you know a, a, we could call it whatever we want it would probably be called like particle or you know, yeah. body, a mover, thing, <laughs> but uh, like a particle class, and that's gonna hold um, the three main components that we need for the physics simulation, a variable for position, a variable for velocity, and a variable for acceleration. Okay, cool. So, uh, so some class-like construct. Yes. Okay, so, but it's, okay, so, so, yeah. The, what did you say, you wanted a position? Yes. Uh, and that's going to be an X and Y. Uh, yes. So actually what we're going to use is um, p5.vector. So p the p5 library has a, a built-in class that stores the X and Y for you and a lot of common vector functions that we'll need. And you can actually just call create vector to make it. So if you said like this dot position equals create vector 200, 200, that would be essentially making a vector for the, that uh, points to the position in the center of the window. Okay. But, I, so, but first, I, but I would do all this in a class. So if you're outside of setup and draw, if you make like class particle, like the ES, uh, uh, most of my examples I use like the ES6 class 
syntax. I'll, 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 we'll stick with that. If I if I feel like <laughs> ri rewriting it in in more function like pseudo functional. Terms. Yeah, you could do it though. Yeah. But like, it's, uh, it's, it's like I I think that object oriented programming is really apt if you're working with things that are actually objects. Yes, which like, is exactly the scenario. So like yeah, I think that this is great for game programming. It just makes sense because it yeah. it is actually dogs or like that are inheriting yeah. from animal. Yeah. Okay. So. So yeah. So if, so if you write the constructor function and put in variables for position, velocity, and acceleration, and call create vector with each of those. Wait. Uh, position, right? And then you said something. Yep. P five dot create vector. Yep. And all of these functions have like reference pages on them, and, and so everything is in the global namespace. So you don't need the p5 dot. Oh, okay. There, there is a way to write p5. Uh, we call it instance mode for when you need to do it as part of a larger <laughs> uh, JavaScript project and you don't uh, want to deal with all this global stuff. But you just can just say create vector. Okay, brilliant. I'm just going to pull this in here. I'm just going to have a look at this. Oh, it pulled up the dictionary. Thanks, Mac OS. Uh, all right, so, OK, where are we? Give me create vector. Where Where is create vector in this? Yeah, that example, it's funny. This it, I'm having like a total deja vu, which is like a real deja vu, because I was looking at this page on my stream, and I was like, this example is like, Terrible for demonstrating create vector. Yeah, like. um, and if you go to the reference, this is, if you go to the P5, click on just under description, see where it says creates a new P5 dot vector? Yeah. Just click on P5 dot vector, you'll get to a better page. Oh, okay, create vector. Oh, thank God. Yeah. This, and I actually, this makes yeah. a lot more sense. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I wonder if anybody actually filed an issue on my live stream. I suggested somebody file an issue to redo that page that comes up. But yeah, so you can just use exactly that function. Sweet. So create vector, and let's say that we're going to want this at, I don't know, 1010 10 to start with. To Perfect. I love that. That's my favorite pixel location. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. And I guess that we want a radius on this or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. I did not think of that. Uh, and I'm going to just. Uh, five pixels or something, or units or whatever it is that we're. I don't even know if it's pixels that we're working on. Yeah, I do everything in my examples. I do everything in pixels. You know, this this and this we could go down the road of a very long discussion about you know a more robust physics engine like something like Box Two D is going to use you know real world measurements and how it calculates all the physics and then you convert those to pixels. But for making quick prototyping fun, quick examples. It's just that's so much extra overhead to deal with that I just do everything in pixels. Um, and so actually, so one, another, so let's try this. Let's see if we can get that particle to just show up in the middle of the canvas. Okay. So the, you know, the way that I usually do this is I'll add another function to the class that's just called like render or show or display. Cool. And then I'll, um, um, and then you could use, um, if you look up in the in the reference, you could probably use the ellipse. You could draw it however you want, but there's a function called ellipse or circle even that will draw a circle. Um, like ellipse. Okay, so this is just height, like position, x y and size, x size, y size. Yes, yes. it'll work. With, it'll work with just one. If you just give it the x size, it'll duplicate that for the y size. Oh, awesome! Yeah. All right. So yeah, those little brackets in the reference refer to it as optional. Sweet. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what's its x and y? That's the question. Yeah. Now, so we like. I'm just gonna write ten ten here, and then we're gonna get <laughs> like the particle in place. Uh, so let's, yeah, and then it's going to be five. We're going to replace it with actual numbers then later. Oh, I expected that to draw something, but it didn't. 
No. So we have to, uh, in order for it to draw something, we have to make an instance of the object and then call the render function from within the draw loop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm doom. I'm dumb uh, because uh, I was. Mm, mm, okay. This dot position. Uh, uh, dot x, I suppose. Exactly. Yes. I just, I just guessed, man. Like I'm using my intuition. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Okay. This dot radius. Yeah. And uh, I need to. So one thing is the ellipse function considers the number you're passing as the diameter. So it was just good to use radius because that's what you'll need for other math. Yeah. But so, you, but you could just say radius times two. Okay. Cool. Fix that. Uh, and yes, I'm thinking. Well, I love your line breaks and indentation. It's very <laughs> pleasing to me. Uh, it's it's making up for the lack of the semicolons. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be like bother bother some people. So just to keep people uh, what we're doing here, we're gonna do that. Cool. But uh, and we need to actually instantiate it. Uh, like do that here. Const particle. No, like what? No. Uh, particle equals uh, new particle. Yeah, that's that's just our particle because we're not doesn't have any constructor arguments. It, it, it's yeah. always one size. Now, I'm assuming. I guess we want to render it every time on draw. Then. Yes. Let Let's actually first yes, I'm gonna do this because I, I I'm I'm instantly bothered with something here, uh, <laughs> and I want to know. What how, what do you think about it? But first, let's let's get things working before we get distracted. Okay, now everything works. Broke because I wrote party party size party there. Look, oh, we have a particle. It's up here in the the left. Woohoo! Particle! It is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> oh, MPJ's audio is low. Let me let me try to fix that so that you can be bothered by my high by my high screaming like I'm gonna increase this to something like that perhaps if I scream now will that distort yeah they will but it's a little bit too high so maybe something like this there we go am I being loud enough now I can be a little bit louder there I think this is a good shouting level <laughs> all right let me know if that's too low. Uh, I'm gonna then I'm gonna go back to coding for a little bit. Lambert Kruby says it's good. Oh, awesome. Life fixing production issues. <laughs> so uh, the thing that I was gonna ask you is that because uh, we we want to be rendering this uh, over time in the draw, I suppose. Yes. And um, this bothers me a bit. Uh, like how how do I share the particle between the two functions. Should I just do this up here? Like const yes. particle. Yeah, I get I put this in the in, in the in the in the global scope ish. Yes. Uh I guess yeah, I so the, the way of working in P5 is to just globally globalize global it's very globally. It's kind of like, it, I mean, it comes back to the fact that we, we were talking uh, uh, earlier when we were doing the warm up that yeah. uh, P5 is optimized for um, accessibility or approachability, right. uh, which is very, very nice for the, if you're giving this language to someone that is not familiar with programming all that much. Exactly. Exactly. Or that just want to get creating things. My brother right. is an artist, and he, uh, in his world, this language is very, very popular among his peers. Right. So I think you're good. You're just missing a P. Uh, <laughs> oh, art, like perhaps like. No, particle. in setup, yeah. Article. It's an article. Particle. Okay. So I think it. Like, <laughs> there you go. Our, our refactoring now worked. Perfect. It's amazing. Awesome. Uh, okay. All right. Um, 
So, we kind of, uh, do we want to, uh, so, so what do we want to do now? Like, what well, is I think my the next thing, the next thing would be to add physics to the particle. So in order to do that, um, you'll want, in addition to just having the po position vector, you'll want a vector for, let's just add just velocity first, a velocity vector. All right. Velocity. And, okay, so I mean, I'm thinking in terms of velocity, like this, the, I'm thinking like velocity would be like, is that the direction of it? Yes, yeah, so the, a vector is an entity that has both magnitude and direction. So the velocity would, I, I have, oh, well, let's try something very fancy here. <laughs> oh, I love this. I don't know if this is going to actually work. Oh, that's cool. Go. Yeah. All right. So uh, um, if this is a vector, yeah. uh, it's, um, this, its length is its magnitude, um, or uh, its speed, and then its direction is which way is it's pointing, like the angle. But we, we have to initialize it with like an x and a y. So if you just wanted to give it like something like one comma zero right now, that would be it would that would mean it would move horizontally across. Ah. Uh, the um, yeah. Oh, I became full screen for a second. Yeah, wow. exactly. Ain't ain't I professional? Yeah. Like I live editing and everything. Uh, okay. Oh, but I'm now. Uh, I'll just stand over here. So if if I do one dot uh, one dot zero, because that would be, then we would be moving. What was the first one? Yeah, that's right. So because the if this is your canvas, yeah, um, the y moves down this way and x moves this way, and this is your particle. So you, we're going to see it in theory. We're going to see it move that way. Okay. So uh, like one like a. a Velocity of one zero, like we have here, yeah. that would be moving from left to right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is my professional setup of moving the camera around. <laughs> uh, uh, one comma zero. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah, exactly. And if we change so, but, this to minus one, it would be moving left. Exactly. And if we would change, yeah. then change the second digit to one, then it would be sort of probably moving diagonally down. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. All right. That 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 makes sense. Um, so what I typically do then is to write a function also in the particle. I usually call it update, but some people call it like step or time step or something. But it's like basically the the time at which every frame of animation, uh -huh. we apply the velocity to the position. OK. Uh, so we are going to, this seems like a, a pretty, this feels very game programming yes. like. I had, it's exactly, uh, yeah. It's yeah. the same exact thing that you would do in a, <laughs> yeah. OK, so, so I assume like we would use like this dot position. And then we want to update that uh, with the new vector. Uh, we want to sh change the vector, uh, add the velocity to the position. That's right. But how though? Because these are do we do I create a new vector based on the uh, based on the the old vector? Maybe I'll start with that, and then you can sh yeah. show me if it's a, there's a better way. Yeah. This is what I, how I naively would do it if I didn't have access to you. Um, yeah. So I would go. This should. So the x should be this dot position dot x plus. Um, trying to learn an uh, U.S. English keyboard layout, which is why I'm making uh, <laughs> more, even more typos than I usually make. This dot velocity dot x. And then we would do the same, but for um, for y, y this position, and then uh, yeah. All right, so maybe this will maybe this will work if I call the update loop. So I guess I should do this. Should I do the update? Uh, up, do the update after the render. 
because that feels intuitively right for me, but maybe not correct. Eww, it moves! Well, it, oh, no. And it's drawing its little trail. So the reason why it's drawing the trail is because background isn't set up. So if you move background into draw, it would, it's going to um, draw the background and the particle each time. Oh, that makes sense. So. Oh, it's a nice effect having the lovely little trail. It's, it's, it's nice. But uh, we want we want to get rid of the the all like we want to re clear the canvas on every yes. and on, on every yes. door. Uh, so how do we do that? Clear canvas or something? Yeah, but actually, just calling the background function will do that. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, there is a clear function, but that actually will clear the canvas and and, and leave it transparent. So background. Um, yeah, we'll just redraw the background. Yeah, OK. There you go. Yeah. All right, we're duplicating so code will... here now, but I'm not going to fall into the refactoring trap because I'm not sure what I would name it yet. So what you did is well, works perfectly um, and is a good solution in, so, in many contexts. But you actually don't need to recreate a new object every time because you could just apply the velocity to that position object directly. And so P5 actually has functions for doing this. Like there's an add function, oh. so the, which just takes an argument of another vector and then adds it to itself. So you can actually just say this dot position dot add dot this dot velocity. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Oh, but. OK, OK, OK. So uh, did you, OK, so I can add this dot position. So this has a. The position object has an add function, and then I could add velo this dot velocity. Yes, it was what we're looking for. And you don't need to set it. You don't even. Uh, maybe it's good practice to set it equal to itself, but you actually don't have to, because if by just calling that function, it's adding the velocity to that position oh, vector. Oh, I, I don't need this assignment, so I can just do do that. That's wow. That's very stateful. So yes. object oriented. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like for I I could I can hear so like so many functional programmers in the audience just cringing right now. But that's, <laughs> yeah. what, that's what we're doing, man. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind being a little crazy. <laughs> Robert Tables goes go. unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Um, I, we can do other things. Like for instance, I learned when I was pair programming with my uh, snake game the other week that you don't really need the body tag and the HTML tag. You can just remove them oh. um, because the browser kind of just figures out that they should be there and add them anyway. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. How lovely. And the funny thing is that he, he is super good at, at DOM and everything. Uh, he knows exactly how it works. But he's kind of like quirky, so he has like <laughs> want to figure out the weird edge cases. Loves it. Anyway, uh, I'm being distracted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next step here is in the same way, so velocity can be defined as the change in position over time. What we want to do to create like a, a, a this attraction force mm. is we need an acceleration vector because acceleration will be is the change in velocity over time so we just need one more uh, vector that's part of the particle object Acceler acceleration. okay so this is how the velocity changes uh, and uh, is this a vector yeah I guess because it yes. will change like OK, so let's say that just for fun that this is 2, 3, because then it will kind of change its. I want to see what happens if you have 2, 3. Sure, yes. Um, this is, you know, things might start exploding, so watch out. Yeah, OK. <laughs> but, um, and, the, you're, and you actually now only need one more line of code to uh, apply the acceleration. OK, cool. So I guess, OK, yes. Add, oh, okay, so I, I want to then this. I want to sh keep. Add oh, that's this. crazy! Oh yeah, no, that's better. Yes. Yeah. 
This I'm behind your. I'm seeing you're typing in a lag in the lag. So <laughs> I reacted to something we, you had we done. We should have set up the Visual Studio uh, live code share so that you, yeah, uh, that you see it directly. But eh, I'll actually do that. Oh, I think you missed. You misspelled acceleration. <laughs> acceleration. Uh, Excel. Oh my god. <laughs> there. I often. Um, Holy shit! <laughs> it exploded, right? Well, no, go. it it worked. It's just very, very fast. So that. No, yeah. So like, if you think about it, these numbers are now accumulating. So within ten frames, the velocity is going to be thirty. So using much, much smaller numbers like 0 .01, 0 okay. .03 would make more sense. Okay, so I do the same, but point zero. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'm actually, like, and I would do, and, and just for the sake of argument here right now, I would suggest making the x zero, just for demonstration purposes, making yeah. the x zero and the y like something like point one or point zero five. Okay. What's point zero? Okay, so I, I made the first argument zero and the other. Oh, okay. Well, I, uh, so, so in, you know, in a way, this is like, on the one hand, like the end of an example. Like, so this we're kind of firmly in. Um, oh no, this is yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I am, <laughs> which which example the nature of code this maps to. But this is like the beginning of chapter two. So the beginning of chapter two is just looking at this idea of. Okay, I could have a velocity, I could have acceleration, and how do they get applied? And you know, there's a zillion different directions we could go in from here. Yeah. Um, but and I there's two that I would suggest. So one, the one that I was thinking we would do is that we would then the the, the this things get more interesting when the acceleration is dynamic. Mm. So instead of having like a fixed acceleration, um, we start with a particle that has no a velocity of zero zero. Uh, and we somehow calculate acceleration in a dynamic way. Like it could just be random every frame. Or what I was thinking of us doing, to think about like as if the um, mouse pointer was like the attractor or like the sun in the solar system. And so the particle is always attracted to wherever you move the mouse. Uh, that I think we could realistically do in the time that we have. Yeah, let's do that. OK. So, so what I would to, do is oh. just. We want the, the, the mouse cursor to basically have gravity, sort of. Yes. So I might start just to like make things, every, make sure everything's working properly. Is to start the particle with no velocity and no acceleration, so all zeros. Cool. And in P five, actually, if you don't give it any arguments, it'll default everything to zero. Okay, cool. But I kind of wanted zero so that we yeah. see what we're doing. Great. Right. Yeah. So now it's not moving. So um, we have to figure out where. We want to calculate the um, the acceleration okay. based on its look lo, um, based on uh, based on where the mouse is. So I, I mean, we'll just let you try to go with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, I guess P five. Like, hmm, mouse uh, mouse X. The system variable mouse x always contains the current horizontal position of the mouse. Okay, so p5 injects global variables. Okay, let's. Yep. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> not not digress on that one. I'm gonna put that in the same place in my brain where the coronavirus is. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, um, so we want to then let's say that I want to then have add to the acceleration sort of where the mouse position is. Uh, um, that won't quite be right, but uh, I no, I don't want to add, yeah, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to try this and see what happens. This dot acceleration dot add and then uh, mouse x mouse y and this is gonna just eject it away too fast I think because it, those values are super high um, 
it's my theory. I don't think that this works out. So I'm gonna do something like that and see if I actually get something. Yes! Hang on, but there was still way too much. So something like this. This is fun. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, so okay. and now <laughs> I'm gonna you're you're so close, but I'm gonna refer to my diagram again. If that's okay. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Um, because what you're actually doing yeah. is, so if you think, I'm just going to draw two squares. I don't know. Can you see these? Uh, can, yeah. I see them. Um, so if this is the particle. Yeah. Um, okay. I see what I'm drawing now. This is the particle here. Um, what you're, what, and let's say this is the mouse here. Actually, yeah. I'm going to. Hold on, I'm gonna change things for a second to make so if this is the particle and this is the mouse pointer, I can't draw. Yeah. It's pointing to right here. So if this particle were attracted to the mouse, yeah. the of the the acceleration would be this vector, accelerating that way. Right? But you basically by taking this vector, you're applying that vector to the particle, it's gonna send it that way. So what you actually need to do this, the way that if you, uh, you know, I'm skipping a lot of steps here, but if you have two points A and B, and you want a vector that points from one to the other, like let's say this is the acceleration, yeah. it equals B minus A. So basically what, the, what you need is a vector that's, like what you're doing, like a vector that's mouse x, mouse y, but you then need to subtract out the position of where the particle is. <laughs> no, it's all clear now, right? Yeah, it's totally clear. Totally clear. That it, it's sometimes but, a little bit tricky to like host, host a stream and then like, cut, like Work out a math, math problem? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's the easiest thing in the world. What yeah, are you exactly. About? Yeah. It's like so, so you kind of know trust because me. it's a, your job. Yeah. Shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, but I can give you an even uh, a much quicker hint to what you've yeah. got there. But what's um, I don't I so I need, to, but I need to sub. I have. You, okay. So you've got mouse x. You've got that there, mouse x. You just need to subtract position dot x. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you want the difference between you want if if you want the difference between where the mouse is and where the position that's where you're pointing. Oh right, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah, okay. I think I get the principle. I right now I'm not at all factoring in the uh, the fact that the the mouse like I need to factor in the relative difference between the position of the mouse and the and the ball. Because otherwise exactly. it will just fly past the mouse, but we want it to slow down as it's near the exactly. mouse. Exactly. Okay, so mouse x minus position or this dot position dot uh, dot x. And I think we need parents here because how math works. Oh come on, there we go. And we need to apply the same logic here. Plus x minus this dot position dot y. Okay, let's see what this gives us. What? Whoa! So you're really there's a there's a there's a fundamental flaw here. You have kind of the right idea of adding it to acceleration. Because ultimately, my examples do add things. That's just ultimately what the that cal math calculation there is like a force, and you might have multiple forces, and you add them all to the acceleration. Yeah. However, the acceleration has to start from zero zero at every moment in time. So unlike so in this case, it would actually be easier, I think, to just set the acceleration equal to create vector with that stuff in it. Like okay. make a new vector. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, you don't you don't want accel you acceleration is accumulating, but it's accumulating in the velocity. It's like at any moment in time, this is the acceleration. Oh, okay, okay. 
So we yeah. don't actually want the, mm -hmm. it's funky. So but you say this dot acceleration equals create vector. Oh, yes, 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 sorry. This makes sense, okay. There, yeah, because I, that does make sense. So, new, okay, okay, it does, it, it does the thing. It does the thing. But it feels yeah, like it's, it, it has a little bit too much orbit. Yeah. I'm going to so, adjust it down a little bit and see what if that helps. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, now it just does the same thing, but slower. Yeah. So, um, you know, so one thing that's missing here is, to, well, there's two things that are missing here. One, there's a concept of mass. Like the gravitational attraction, like the mass of something plays a role, but that's really just baked into this like 0 0.001. Like, oh, it could be stronger or weaker, just changing that number. But what is really missing here is that true gravitational attraction also has um, the strength of gravitational attraction is relative to the distance. So when things are closer, mm. the attraction force is stronger. When it's further, it's weaker. Oh. Um, and so right now, I don't know this that is really just static here. To like, I mean, there's, so I don't know that the one thing that I would say, though, is that, um, and I, um, is that one of the reasons for using p5.vector in the same way that we changed it to using add is we could, um, we could do, um, we could do these operations that you're doing with the vector functions, which I think would make the code a little, it might not make it more readable, but it'll definitely make it a little easier to play with. Um, so for example, like instead of just doing all the vector math inside of create vector, if you were to just make the acceleration a vector with mouse X and mouse Y, and then subtract, call dot subtract position, and then there's also a, a function to scale it, so you could scale it by that 0 0.001. You'll see this will um, open up some possibilities. So what do you say? Like, what what did I use as the base? The so if you, if I what I would do like comment out your the line where you have this this whole block that you're set creating the acceleration. All right. So we have it as reference. Yeah, that's a good idea. So out with this. Yeah, and then just make this dot acceleration equal to a vector that just holds the mouse. Oh, okay. Uh, let's. Dun, 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 dun. Oops. Great vector. And then mouse x, mouse y. In in the same way that you changed. You used add the velocity. You can now call dot subtract the position from the acceleration. I guess. The subtract. Oh, that's crazy! You can even just do it there. Yeah, I guess you could do it right there, and you could chain them. Ah! <laughs> it's just S U B. It's short for subtract. Okay. So you know, my example is a typical way I'll do this, which will I can see if I can get a few more people to unsubscribe. Would be I would say like this dot acceleration dot subtract as a, like a new, but you know, chaining is good. Yeah. There's no reason not to chain them here. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it, it makes it perhaps makes it a little bit less uh, confusing. We we can keep it like this and then do that optimization later. Uh, so now we wanted to re said we wanted to remove like get rid of compensate with the position. Yes. This uh, position dot x. I'm sort of understanding what we're doing, but Oh like, no, but you don't need you don't need the dot x, you just subtract the vector. Oh right, because they're vectors, so we don't need to do yeah. that. Which yes. is the whole point of using vectors and not objects, I suppose. This dot uh, position <laughs> I'm not sure if this is visible if, if, since the stream is not frame rate high enough, but it's just like flying all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and then the now to multiply, um, there's a function for a new called dot 
multiplier, just dot M U L T for short. Mult. And you could chain it or you could do that as a separate line. And then you could just put in your, you know, whatever that factor was oh, yeah, that you yeah. chose. Zero, 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 one. Uh, I'm going to do that. Mult. See what that gives us. All right, this now seems. Yeah, like now it definitely, now it it's definitely has. So if you wanted to have an orbit um, and your one is moving the mouse will sort of cause that, but you could actually just give it, you could go back to giving it a little initial velocity. Like remember how you had a, like one comma zero? Yeah. So that when it starts like pushing off to the side and it'll end up orbiting, I think you'll see. So if you have an, like an initial velocity, that would... Yeah, so we set that back to zero, zero. But if you give it, I think if you just push it like horizontally a little bit, if the mouse is in the middle when you start it, whoops. Oh, but not one, one, because you don't want it to go towards the... Like, I mean, now it's just flying all over the place. I, I didn't feel like... Yeah, the well, so we haven't... We haven't done anything to, um, well, there's a few things we could do here. One, we haven't done anything to kind of massage <laughs> its, uh, uh, <clears throat> the constraints of its uh, velocity. <laughs> so, for example, um, it can just keep going faster and faster and faster, yeah. bu building off of the acceleration. So one thing that you could do that's a nice sort of trick here is you can call the limit function. The what? Like if you say, there's a function called limit. All right. So if you call this.velocity.limit, and you could give it like a number that would never allow it to sort of like go faster oh. than a certain. Uh, so so what, let's say that it could never go faster than 10. Or yeah. I have a hard time. Yeah, I'll give it something lower right now just so that we see that much more, uh, as a much more sort of extreme uh, adjustment. Oh, now it actually is orbiting. Yeah. Okay, so the... All right, so we're capping the velocity here. Yes. So, yeah, that really helps. Now, Now this is not... Again, we're... we're uh, <laughs> you know, as, there's a balance here between, like, are we doing an accurate physics simulation, which we're definitely not, <laughs> and like, do we want just to create this sort of illusion and feeling of this kind of behavior that we're looking for? Yeah, because and my examples, I'm really Flatteris firmly far in the, along. in the chat. Said, like, it's talking about how uh, the square root of the distance, and that's yes. something that so that would be the correct I, way. Yes, so that would that's also something that would probably make sense to add in. It would actually be very you know easy to do. I think we're like running up against the time yeah. here, but um, but because we calculated this vector, um, that was the uh, the difference between the um, the mouse and the position. The magnitude of that vector is actually the distance. And so dividing by distance, we could add in a divide by distance squared. But I don't know if it makes more sense, actually, we could just pull up the, um, I have a code example that's doing basically exactly this. And if we looked at it in comparison, and we might we would see those pieces in there. Yeah, but I, I kind of like uh, the, the simplicity of, of not working with too much complicated. Yeah. Uh, compli just keep yeah, the math yeah. very into it. Like yes. It, it so this is not great. I would say, like right now, I would say what we're showing is not gravitational attraction, but just like an, an attraction force ah. that we need. Because gravitational attraction inherently requires that distance uh, as, a, as a scaling factor. Mm. So uh, people are asking if the commented code is equal to the, to the oh. new code. Y yeah, um, it is. OK. It's just not, it's doing it with the sort of like the, you know, the standard math operators uh, <laughs> minus yeah. and multiply than with the vector math functions. Exactly. But it's doing exactly the same operations. And then what's nice about the doing it with, also nice about doing it with the vector operations is that um, if we wanted to extend this into 3D, like all oh. the vector, the P5 vector supports a third argument for all, and it'll do all this for this stuff. Whereas, you know, 
And that's why it's sort of nice to use the vector math functions because other you're you're reducing the amount of like redundant like dot x minus dot y. Oh, I mean, or dot sense. x this minus dot x that, and dot y this minus dot y that now dot z. And so yeah, but it is equivalent, and it is not. It, uh, um, oh, it's funny that now I'm realizing that this uh, uh, viewer's name is Hell on Earth. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's where I'm reading it as Hello on Earth. Yeah, like it, Hello, Hello on I Earth put is it uh, was like, yeah. but it it might also be Hello near this. Oh, Hello near this. I like that even better. It's oh, okay. I, I love his name. Like I think yeah. that he has probably written how it's supposed to be, but I think yeah. that my brain blocks it out just to be able to uh, misunderstand it every single time. Yeah, hello near uh, hello near this. Um, it, a strange attract. This is related to strange attractors, and you know, not to keep uh, plugging my uh, videos, but I do have a video a coding challenge on the Lorenz attractor, which is a strange attractor, and um, those are a particular kind of um, algorithm for generating um, chaotic attractors, which are quite beautiful and interesting to make. But this, I would call just like a. This is the MPJ attractor, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I think yeah, like we 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 did something. Like yes. we, we definitely demonstrated uh, uh, demonstrated the, like what's nice about processing and the approachability of it. Uh, yeah. and I think we also showed a little bit of like the the niceness of having like quickly accessible vector vector math libraries like this. Uh, and and what processing all is it's all about. Um, I am going to put this thing in a gist and post it, like post it in the chat. And while I'm doing that, uh, and also like if you're watching the YouTube video later, it's gonna be in the episode description instead. And while I'm doing that, uh, you can talk a little bit about like why like where people find you. And oh, sure. what, uh, uh, and talk a little bit about the nature of code and when a new version is going to be released and where you can yeah. find it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if you're looking for me, um, you know, coding train on YouTube. Um, I've got at Schiffman on Twitter. Uh, there's also at coding train on Twitter. There's an Instagram. That's the dot coding dot train. But this project, if you're interested in this kind of like how to learn the basics of physics simulation in code, in particular in JavaScript, um, in P5JS, like uh, we were attempting to do here, um, go to natureofcode.com. That's the website for the book project. And the, what's there right now is the book from 2012. And all of the code there is Java with uh, processing, um, the Java-based processing. And I'm in progress, starting as of this week, rewriting the book in JavaScript and redoing all the examples in JavaScript and making new video tutorials in JavaScript. So um, you, the live streams on the coding train on YouTube will be about nature of code and continuing this discussion um, over the next few months. And I also am, there's a GitHub, github.com slash nature dash of dash code has all of the repos for the book, um, the website, um, the code examples, and I'm really um, um, looking for help in particular with the build system for the book and making all the stuff like look cor look correct with, and it all runs off of CSS and this other thing called Magic Book. So anyway, if you're interested in any of that, find jump in on the GitHub issues there, try to see if you can build the book, it'll render a PDF for you. <laughs> um, and uh, if you want to contribute to that, um, that would be super helpful. Awesome. Yeah, and thank you so much from my part for being on the show again. Uh, it's always such a blast to just spend time with you virtually. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just so much energy and uh, I, I just love it. It's just a book. Ah, okay. Thank you so much. This is so fun for me, and it, uh, uh, I really I feel like uh, a lot of the stuff we do is so, you know, semicolons or no semicolons aside is also spiritually aligned. <laughs> so um, it's really fun to be able to sort of like um, see how some of the stuff I'm doing fits into the way that you think about my spirit um, programming. animal is yeah. no semicolon. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I hope we can do this again more in the future, oh, yeah, yeah. in person again. I, I would. Anytime, man. Uh, it's been so lovely. Uh, 
and uh, for you that are new and here you're you have just watched uh, a show of uh, like a, a show an episode of fun fun function this is uh, a uh, live streamed uh, show that I do every week at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, please do tune in next week, or if you're watching the YouTube recording, uh, uh, yeah, you you also get it every week by subscribing. Um, before I head off, I would like to make a little shout out to our fine sponsor, Brilliant. Uh, they have these awesome interactive YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but interactive coding tutorials but they're not text they're not video they are interactive so you get these interactive coding challenges where you can learn computer science fundamentals or uh, math that is used for neural networks and stuff like that uh, they are amazing and they have a very good and affordable subscription that you can get for a lot off by going to brilliant.org slash fff so do check them out uh, and that is it. Uh, uh, we're going to uh, close off the stream and uh, I hope that everybody is going to have a absolutely fantastic week. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Dan, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, and uh, until next Monday morning, stay curious. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I love that thing. <laughs>